Yo, man, this is Joe the Astronaut blasting off 2002 Entertainment. We got Ghost in the house, and who are people that have inspired you to get into rap? <clears throat> well, the first first person that actually inspired me to actually try to rap, stepdad's brother's son. We were at their uh, anniversary party for my stepdad's brother, and him and his cousin busted out a CD that they did, like a little mixtape. That shit was fly. Like me and my other cousin was listening to that shit, and we was hyping them up. And the very next couple days, like we went to school and we did, and went right behind the school. And we was actually just writing some rhymes and shit in this little notebook So that would probably be like the first inspiration I had to actually try rapping But apart from that like everybody who make music in general and fucking do shit that actually like Oh shit they fucking actually doing something nice or that I can actually get down to Do you think you have matured skillfully, artistically and as humanly as possible? Oh yeah most definitely I be listening to my old shit and honestly that shit be wack as fuck sometimes I be listening to that shit my flow was fucking spaced out like there's Seconds between words sometimes like I was just trying to stay on the beat but I didn't really play with the flow too much I didn't understand how to do that shit I knew I had to be on the beat to sound right but I didn't understand to fill in those spaces and my shit sounded like some old school project pad ass shit but not as nice so I fucking made my flow better I started getting better at that shit learning how to bend bars and shit learning how to count bars on top of that in that time when I first started rapping I was listening to a lot of underground shit fucking brother Lin Chung like Jedi Mind Tricks type shit Shit. So the shit that I would write about was some off the wall ass shit. Like I made a song about fucking the devil being my drug dealer and shit. I fucking wrote bars about I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, writing bars about like fucking I wouldn't scared of death. Like shit, I helped the devil kill my family type shit. And I matured a lot since then. I would say like the shit I write about now, I like it a little more than the shit I used to write about really. What are your goals from this point going forward? First and foremost, find somebody that can do an animated video so, and, and actually follow through. Like, I've talked to a couple people. Some people be like, oh, it's a lot of work or it's going to be too expensive. And other people, like, they've given me a price and then they back out when I fucking bring it back up. So that would probably be my first goal. I want to put some more people on. Like, I want to find people nobody is listening to. People that maybe not even recording nothing right now because they just don't got the equipment. Or the know-how. They, 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 yeah, or the fucking know-how. Like, I've helped people in the past write some rhymes and record that shit. So I'd like to try to do that shit again. Mentor type shit. Yeah. Has the weight been fulfilling? He's going to ask me what I mean by this. <laughs> well, you already know what the answer is. I don't know what you're talking about. The wait for what exactly? Not just so, the wait for the interview, but the wait for the video to come out the way you want. The vision you have behind it, artistically, you know, creatively, come out and be projected, fit the song, like, the way you want it, you know what I'm saying? Because that's hard. <coughs> yeah, most definitely. I mean, I feel like I did it at the right time, the video itself. I knew the right people at the right time, so that that could come out that the the best vision possible. Like, I really love, I really love the way that shit came out. It came out to the best representation of what I wanted it to be close to possible in our limitations. And yeah, the interview always worked it. Like, you know, I've always fucking fuck with you. Did that first radio show, I fucking came through and shit. So yeah, of course that shit was worth it. It's an honor, nigga. Come on. It's an honor. So you can edit that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> the next one's like a two part question. It says, uh, what do you feel you bring to the game? And I know you practice everywhere. Has that helped you get better? What do I think I bring to the game? I think I bring vision. Of Mexican that really hasn't been represented too well. Like, you don't hear too much. It's always one sided. It's either Mexican, Spanish rapper that just talks about their life growing up in Mexico and shit, or you got your Chicano rapper who just grew up Mexican in the United States. But I've already had to do both. Like, I've been almost half my life here and almost half my life over there, 18 years and 12 years. Um, so I know how it is. Like, and I think I bring a different aspect to a different view on Mexican culture in itself and Chicano culture as well. So you're saying like you're bending both cultures to put out one, one person. Product, yeah. yeah. As far as practicing all the time, yeah, of course. I mean, I remember back in Denver and I got a homeboy that lives here. He also got fucking deported. Fucker lives downtown and I've run into him at work a couple times, like at different jobs that I've had out here. But me and him, we used to kick it when we was kids because our moms was friends. And I would kick it at his house and we would leave to because he used to live in this nice ass little neighborhood. And they had a big ass fucking park and we would just walk through that motherfucker and I would just we'd be walking for a good like hour or two just smoke for a while and then just be walking and I would just be rapping the whole time freestyling that, 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 just saying nonsensical bullshit 
We're kicking it with my homeboys in the car. Like, when I got a car, my homeboys would put beats with, uh, CDs with beats and shit. So we'd just be freestyling the whole drive and shit. Recording all the time. I also write constantly. Like, if I think of something, I'll write and I'll try to expand on it as much as I can in the moment. If I'm at work or something, even if I'm taking phone calls and shit, if I hear something that sparks a line or something, I'll fucking jot it down and try to come back to it later. But yeah, practicing, it's like anything else. You can't be good at nothing if you don't ever practice it. You think there's no beat you can rap? I know there's beats that I, maybe not that I couldn't rap, but I just wouldn't rap over them. Cause it's like anything else. I mean, when I, like I said, when I first started, that shit was whack. And I'm sure anybody you talk to, they'll tell you their first track was fucking whack. It's gotta be the same for producers. I mean, you don't just start putting out fucking Gold Dre, The Chronic type beats the first time you touch the boards. I mean, I've heard a lot of beats in my life. I've met a lot of producers, like just starting off. Sometimes they'll send me beats and I'll be like, nah, I don't I don't really see myself rapping over this because it's not not that good. I mean, when I ask the question, I'm not like saying somebody just sent any me fucking beat. A quality gym. beat. That's wild. Do yeah. I think I could wreck any quality beat? Damn sure trying. Forget about the high quality beats. What I was talking about is the styles, you know, of, of music. Like, people want to label shit oh, all the time. Okay. Like, like, the different genres. Boom, boom bap, trap, or right, fucking right, right, right. funk. You know, any of that shit, you, can, <coughs> you touch it, you have the confidence that you're going to fuck it up. And you better say, yeah, bitch. Well, I mean, I fucking <laughs> played with a lot of beats already as is. Like, from when I started out to now, I've used different type of beats. I mean, yeah, I think I could kill any type of genre if the right beat is presented. Can you give us any info on new projects you might be working on? Working on some shit, beats that I got from producers here. And I got Street God on there you know, from... Museum? Yeah. Dude, fucking beats a while. He uses only he got a heavy 3-6 Mafia influence, but the beats are fucking wild and nice as fuck. First thing I'ma drop off that shit is actually over one of his beats. What a fucking nice ass 3-6 Mafia sim. Someone else I got already so far is uh, Jeezy. Jeezy Ortega. I got a couple beats off of him. I got a couple more I need to get off of him as well. But yeah, I'm gonna try to do an album or a little project at least with local, local producers. I wanna work with some local producers for once. And I got some other shit I'm working on too. I mean, I'm always listening to beats on YouTube. I've never been one of those people that I feel above just dropping the track for the fucking love of it. If I hear a nice beat and I see the title says free and that's nice, I'm gonna write something, I'm gonna drop it. Fuck it. I'm not gonna hold those bars back and try to, you know what I mean? Spit it and just save it. Something else? Oh, only, only for fucking exclusive beats that I own. You know what I mean? What's the story behind this new video you dropped? El Coyote. The story behind it, the story behind the song itself, it's a tribute to Houston, Texas own Carlos Coy, aka El Coyote, or as most people know him, South Park Mexican, SPM. But the influence that his music had as well, like, just seeing a Mexican not only spit some shit, but actually fucking go hard. Like, he's one of the few Latinos out there that could even say that. Like, you got your pun, you got, like, Bodega Bams and all that, and then you got, like, SPM. Like, this motherfucker was hard. Like, he got a lot of fucking cold-ass bars that people just sleep on. So, Joel Ortiz doesn't fit in like, on Joel thing. Ortiz as well. I mean, like, all these people. Then you got a lot of, like... Rappers that are just your basic Chicano rappers. No disrespect, nothing, but like all these dudes sound the same to me. So SPM brought some other shit. He brought, and then he's like, he's a funny ass dude. Yeah, he's a and I try to incorporate that in the video as well. Like a lot of his bars are very comical. So I try to fucking do that shit as well. But it's just basically a tribute to do. Like if you pay close attention, you can catch all the references. How do you see hip hop at this moment? I fucking love that shit. I love the way hip hop be growing all the time, man. It's improved in my opinion. Opinion, that shit has improved. It keeps improving. Like, no disrespect to the OGs of the game, right? Like, motherfuckers went hard in the, in the paint, but you're not gonna tell me, even as lyrical as Rock Kim is, that he could hold his own with a Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar got that flow, he got the content, and he got all that shit. It's not even a debate about old, old school or new school, because I love hip hop across the board, you know what I'm saying? Like, I still go back and listen to old school jams that I was listening to in high school, like when fucking Little John and the Eastside Boys dropped Crunk Juice. When that's just a CD basically for beats, cause ain't too, Lil John just repeats himself a bunch, but I fucking love hip hop through and through for what it is. If you do what you do, and you do it good, I fucks with it. It don't matter if you're doing lyrical, it don't matter if you're doing something to get crunk, fucking trap, I don't care. If it's good, I fuck with it, what it is. And music just keeps evolving, hip hop just keeps evolving. And it keeps 
getting even bigger than it was. Like, it started off as something so small, and it's like the fucking biggest genre in the world right now. And it's only gonna keep getting bigger, so I can't even hate on that. Are you ready for what's to come? As far as hip hop goes, or what you mean? Like, what might come? Out of you doing more projects and being more in the public eye. Yeah, of course, because it pretty much just leads to working with more people. And that's really what I like to do the most out of anything, to be honest. I like working with other people. That shit is fun. Like, working with Soul Stretch, working with um, cats out uh, in Spain, out in other countries and shit, in Turkey. Like, that shit is dope. Like, to know that somebody in Spain heard my rap on YouTube and was like, damn, this fucking dude is cold. I want to reach out to him and fucking rap with him. Or fucking some kid in the middle of fucking New York fucking was like, oh, this shit is nice. I want to fucking do a verse with this cat. That shit's an honor, to be honest. Like, fuck all the accolades and all that shit. That shit is nice that a random ass person in the middle of nowhere, or maybe not even in the middle of nowhere, but just some random person you've never met, somewhere you've never even been, hit you up and be like, hey, do, do a verse with me. Like, I like what you do. I want to work with you. Like, hell yeah, that shit's... That's Does just that happen recently? The most recent time, I guess that would be Soul Stretch. No, no, hold on. No, I think uh, it would be Street Guy would be the mo the latest, but he's a producer. Are there going to be more 2002 Entertainment mixed and mastered track? Yeah, I want to do uh, like a project, like a little EP or something. A couple tracks that you go ahead and work on them. Do what it do, shit, fuck it. One of the fucking most played songs right now is shit that you fucking mix and master. Why wouldn't I? Formula that can't fail. It's funny, but it's, it's an it's honor. That, it's that blue map on um, Breaking Bad, baby. Who is Zach Molin? Zach Molin, that's the little homie. Rest in peace. Passed away a couple weeks right before the video actually dropped. So, little homie always showed love. The last conversation I actually had with him was I used to work at this company processing student loan applications, the FAFSA application. And he was applying for that shit. And I was helping him answer some questions he had. I won't say what kind of help or what kind of questions, but... <laughs> he had hit me up. I was helping him out and shit. And then I dropped the track. He had heard the track, fortunately enough. And he fucking loved that shit. He was bumping that bitch. But he didn't get to see the video, so it just felt right. Like, I had to dedicate that video to him and his memory. When can we expect more music? Very soon. I got some shit I'm going to record in the next couple of days. That Street God song will be out for the end of the month, for sure. Any artist you might want to work with? I want to work with Soul Stretch again, of course. Any artist? Uh, like, I want to work with Rashid. That shit would be dope. Do be showing love. All the posts about uh, El Coyote itself. And, like, sh that shit's cool. Because, I mean, I remember I remember growing up and listening to his verses on SBM songs and shit. And like, damn, this motherfucker is one of the coldest spitters I've ever seen. So, to get him on a verse, that would be cool. Getting accolades from people I used to smoke to is nice as fuck. be nice to work with, like, Someone like J.I.D. That motherfucker be killing it right now. Motherfucker nice on the mic. I'd like to do a song with MJ Apollo too. That shit would be fucking dope. Motherfucker gets down. But it has to be a beat that he does. He's just cold with that shit. Lulan as well. Put that motherfucker on that list. But it's gotta be a song called I Love Quadis. Nah, I don't wanna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there no ride alone video? Mostly because of resources, to be honest. I mean, if I do this song, the video for that song, I want to do it some justice. Like, I feel like we went all out on that song itself. That if I were to do a video, the video got to go all out. And I want to do some wild ass shit. Like, I do got a video plan, but I need to have the resource. And I'm not the type that I'm just going to, even if, if I'm dropping new music, that doesn't mean I can't come back and revisit my old shit. Ten years from now, I'm gonna come back and do that video eventually. Right along dialogue. We'll, we'll, we'll come and visit you at the nursing home. She could be in the video. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Thank you to everybody that's always showed love from the get go. Like, like I said, that shit's wild. That people you've never met, places you've never been, get your shit and like that shit. So shout out to everybody who's ever listened, anybody who's ever watched the video, whether you liked it or not. Regardless, you took the time to peep it. Thank you to all those motherfuckers. And of course, thank you to like, people like you, my moms, people who support in a more on-hands fashion. And when I heard this motherfucker say, SPM say that I, I wrote a hundred songs before I ever recorded my first track. Like when I heard him say that, I was like, damn, I haven't put in enough work yet to be worthy of touching that microphone. I gotta write more before I fucking can even try to touch that microphone, turn that microphone. Can't even try to touch that microphone. Turn that microphone. Time to get back on that shit and kill that mic.